Cooperative party? This way, please. Do I say thank you to anybody? No hosts? Oh, well. Well, the liquor's genuine anyway. I know you, don't I? I don't think so. You remember the Paradise Club? The what club? Paradise. Not to my knowledge. Well, I spelt the name right anyway. Found yours yet? Uh, yes. Well, we may as well swap cards, save intros. No, I think I'll... Uh... Oh, you're not leaving already, I hope. You'll miss a rather good lunch. Uh, just the hat and the umbrella, please. Well, good morning, gentlemen. You've all found out where you're sitting, I take it. Yes. So, uh, shall we? Good. Over there, Rupert. That's right. Oh, one absent tea, I see. Well, we won't wait. I chose the menu with rather more than usual care. It'd be a pity to spoil it for one defaulter. What's that? Oh, good man, you found some. Excellent. Uh, did you have any trouble parking? I, um, I didn't come by car. Uh, very sensible. Oh. This is good. Absolutely at peak. Oh, don't you agree? I don't drink. Oh, no, of course not. I forgot. Well, do start, gentlemen. Good God Almighty. This is the right place, the cooperative whatnot thing? Yes, do come in. We were just about to begin without you. Oh, I took the wrong turning, and not for the first time. I found myself in a room full of trade unionists cooking up the next wage claim. All Tories, of course. Didn't take to me at all. Ah, that's better. What is it? Hmm, fair enough. The 52 is all gone, I suppose. Enjoy your meal, gentlemen. You know the old saying, if a rich man eat when you will, if a poor man when you can. <laughs> See, we are not disturbed. Leave it to me, sir. Well, now, gentlemen, I think the first thing for me to do is to establish my good faith. You'll find these contain the missing halves of the five pound notes. Captain Porthill, Captain Mycroft, Lieutenant Lexi, Major Rutland Smith, Captain Weaver, Captain Stevens, Major Race. No, no, don't bother to thank me, gentlemen. Purely a business transaction. Be a bit difficult to thank you anyway, old darling since I don't know your name. Didn't I sign the letters? How very careful of me. Well, I've no objections now. I don't think my name's Hyde. J. G. N. Hyde. What's the J stand for? Jekyll. Oh, that's a thought, isn't it? Mr. Hyde, Corporal, Sergeant. Let's just leave it that I outrank you. The book, gentlemen. I'd like your opinions on it. Uh, you've all read it, I take it. I'm afraid I didn't, though, darling. Any particular reason why not, Major? I never read books from strange men. Well, then, a very brief precy for the Major's benefit. An American thriller with the germ of a good, almost brilliant idea about a group of single-minded men who plan and execute a particularly daring bank robbery, right? Now, any criticisms as to the way the robbery was organized? You asking me? Well, I thought it was quite original. That's all? Yes, that's all. Weaver, uh, I think I agree with him. I'd like to read it again, quietly. I see. Stevens. Oh, I, I enjoyed it. A bit far-fetched, perhaps. You couldn't see it happening in real life? Oh, I, I wouldn't go as far as that. Life's always surprising me. But didn't it excite any of you? Mycroft. I was held by it, yes. Nothing more. I mean, weren't you actually excited? I can't say I was. 
I prefer more subtle things, Vinny. But didn't it give any of you any ideas? It gave me a headache. I read it in bed. Yes, but what about the basic idea? The way the robbery was conceived like a textbook military campaign. Didn't that fire your imaginations? Apparently not, old darling. Well, you disappoint me, gentlemen. I expected more of you. I felt sure that, at the very least, the idea of making easy money would appeal to all of you. What makes you so sure of that? Oh, come now. You're all crooks, aren't you? Of one kind or another. Wouldn't you agree with that, Padre? Not staying here and be insulted? Oh, I would if I were you. After all, we are all men of the world. So an officer who was cashiered for gross indecency in a public place, the Botanical Gardens, Tunbridge Wells, wasn't it? Needn't feel squeamish. And then, of course, you took to the old dog collar racket. What denomination are you at the moment? Church of England, isn't it? Oh, no, no. No, that stopped at Bristol didn't it, at the Assizes. I felt the judge went a bit far myself. Still, you're here. And I'm sure you're going to stay. You seem amused, Mr. Lexi. Is it a joke we can all share? Well, you tell me. Well, I can't tell you the same joke, I'm afraid, but uh, try this one. It has a certain charm. Berlin, 1945. Lieutenant Edward Lexi, Royal Corps of Signals, kicked out for giving information to the Russians. The joke being that you did it for money, as always, not principles. Not funny? Bit near the knuckle, perhaps? Depends whose finger's on the trigger, doesn't it, Captain Porthill? Yours was in Cyprus when you were cashiered for shooting Ioka suspects. He's still using those nimble fingers, though, playing the piano in cheap nightclubs and extracting pocket money from middle-aged ladies for services courageously rendered. Race. Ex-major race. With his customary foresight in these matters, which did him and at the same time kept him from justice, resigned his commission just before a flourishing black market ring was uncovered in post-war Hamburg. Decent gesture, though. The sake of the regiment and all that. Reading will tell, you know. Friend Stevens. One-time fascist backroom boy. Mosley speaks and all that. Saw the light just in time and was made an officer and a gentleman. Unfortunately, he couldn't quite behave like one. The Sunday newspapers had a field day. There's nothing the British public likes better than catching the... Odd men out. Captain Weaver, a sad case, but not demanding too much sympathy for the captain. Save your tears for the men who died as a result of his gross negligence. Four, weren't there? Members of a bomb disposal squad acting under Captain Weaver's orders while he was acting under the influence. And, of course, gallant Major Hyphenated Smith. We mustn't forget you. You always wanted to die with your boots clean, didn't you, Rupert? But marriage changed all that. His wife's money bought him out after she'd settled some embarrassing mess bills. However, gratitude, as Nurse Cavell omitted to add, is not enough. And where do I fit in? Well, I'm ashamed to say that I have the advantage over you gentlemen. My criminal career is just about to blossom. You'll find nothing on me, <laughs> not a blemish. I served my country well as a regular soldier and was suitably rewarded after 25 years by being declared redundant. Now, don't let's kid ourselves any longer. This was not intended to be a book of the month club lunch. I brought you all together because I have a certain proposition to make. Now, what do we all have in common, apart from an urgent need for funds? 
We were all trained at great public expense to do certain things with the utmost efficiency, such as how to kill a man with the minimum effort and other minor arts and crafts, which, while well, frowned upon in peacetime, are acclaimed in times of war. Well, I've got a social conscience, and I think it's a crying shame for so much public money to be wasted. I intend to put it to some practical peacetime use. Now then, the main character in this book knew just where to lay his hands on the various experts to do the jobs he wanted. Well, you are my experts. You were all specialists in your own fields, and with your cooperation, I intend to rob a bank myself. And the pay, gentlemen, 100,000 pounds each. That's $280,000. A million, 100,000 Deutschmarks, over 100 million francs, if any of you are thinking of emigrating, and it could be more. How do you know? Have you counted it already? How do I know? How did I arrive at all of you? Because I make sure of all my facts before I move. I've put in a good deal of time and money on this project. by giving you the benefit of both. And which bank have you in mind? That's restricted at the moment. And this gentleman is as far as I'm prepared to go for the time being. Think it over carefully. I hope no one will try to be clever. Such a waste of time. I shall deny everything and a year's work will go for nothing. It could be a year well spent for all of us. How do we contact you? I'll do the contacting. I'll let you know when and where we meet again. Same terms? But of course, Mr. Lexi. Oh, do drink up while it lasts. Everything's paid for and the room's yours till four. Good afternoon, gentlemen. It's been a pleasure. Well, speaking purely personally, old darlings, I thought that was a bloody good lunch. I do hope he hasn't the National Provincial in mind. They're being awfully decent to me at the moment. 